Hello, calculus friends. Let's talk about optimization. So today we're going to talk about optimization, which is really just absolute value in context-based situations. Um, and in order for you to optimize something, it means to find the highest or the lowest or the most optimal location, depending on what your given conditions are. Um, so I have some steps here in the box, but as you may have noticed from other videos of mine, I don't really go through the steps. That box is there for you to look at later on. Um, but really, we need to set up an equation, figure out when the derivative equals zero, and think about our domain and see what works. Let's do it. So number one says an open top box is made by cutting congruent squares of length x from the corners of a 20 by 20 piece of cardboard. Uh, how long should the squares be to make it hold as much as possible? This is your most basic, iconic um, optimization problem as far as I'm concerned, where basically you have a sheet of paper that's 20 by 25, and then you cut squares out of the corner like this. And so I'm going to cut these out with scissors. Here, I'm going to draw scissors. Look at how talented I am. Look at those scissors. I'm going to cut corners out of this and get rid of them. And then I'm going to fold along these dotted lines to make a box that looks like this. And it's an open top box. Okay. And I want to know how big, how much volume can I get that box to have? All right. So if I want to figure that out, if I cut these side lengths out, I'm going to call an x by x square what I'm counting, uh, what I'm cutting out of each of these corners. So if I cut out an x by x square and fold it up, these interior measurements, I don't know, 25 minus 2x, because there's a box on the left and a box on the right. And then this piece would be 20 minus 2x. And if I take that, this 25 minus 2x is really the length of the box. This 20 minus 2x is really the depth of the box. And then x is what I'm folding up. x is going to be the height of the box. So if I want to optimize volume, what I really need here is a volume and equation. And the volume of this box is going to be length times width times height. So our volume here, let's see, is, oh goodness, I got to distribute. Let's see, 25 times 20 is going to be 500 um, minus 50x minus 40x um, plus 4x squared. And I'm multiplying that all by x. So my volume is really 4x cubed minus a 90x squared plus 500x. And I want to optimize that. So I want to find the x value at which this thing has a maximum. And we learned before that maximum can occur at a critical point or an endpoint, which is where the derivative equals zero, or the derivative doesn't exist. Pardon me. So then I'm going to take the derivative, v prime, and I'm going to call that 12x squared minus 180x plus 500. And I want to know when that equals zero or doesn't exist. Fine. And if I want to know when that equals zero or doesn't exist, then I want to do some math here to try to solve this. Now, I got to be honest, this one doesn't work out great. So I am going to actually go into Desmos and let that do it for me. So 12x squared minus 180x plus 500. Do, do, do. So y equals twelve x squared minus one hundred and eighty x plus five hundred. All right, and if I look at that. I want to know when this thing equals zero. Okay, it looks like it equals zero twice on the graph. And the nice thing about Desmos is if I tap there, I can find that location. 3.681 and 11.319. So x equals 3.681, 11.619. Is that what that was? See, now even I can't remember. 11.319, pardon me. Uh, 
All right. And now I need to decide, okay, what's the maximum volume? So just like an absolute, uh, an absolute extrema equation, what I really want to do here is have some test values. So here's my test table, and I need to test my x values and then f of x. But really, it's just v of x here because it's my volume equation. So I need to think about the domain. Well, the domain of this original is technically all real numbers, but let's think about context here. If this is length and width and height, I need all of those to be positive values. So zero is really the, the end points of my domain here. And the things that would make this a zero is when x equals 10 or when x equals zero. So my end points of my domain are zero and 10. And then I want to test any x values in between 0 and 10 that make the derivative equal 0, which is 3.681. And then to figure out my maximum volume, I would plug 0 into the original, get 0. I plug 10 into the original, I would also get 0 because I'd have 25 minus 20 times 20 minus 20, that's 0. And now I need to plug 3.681 into there. And I'm going to pull this up. So it was, let's see, 25 minus 2 times 3.681. And then 20 minus 2 times 3.681. And then times 3.681 itself. And I got a volume of 820.528, as long as I type correctly. 320.528. So it says, how large should the squares be to make the box hold as much as possible? That's that. So this is our square length, and that right there is our max volume. And if this is inches, that volume would be in cubic inches, and that 3.681 would be in regular inches. There we go. And that's what we're doing. We're just going to make a context-based situation and then solve it. So I'm going to come down here. A farmer has 800 feet of fencing to enclose a rectangular pen. One side of the pen is constructed against an existing fence, so no new fence will be needed. So basically, I have existing fence here, and then I need to build a new fence up against it. And that new fence is a rectangle, so I'm going to call it X by Y. Except the thing is, I have 800 feet of fencing, so I know that X plus X plus Y has to be 800, so 2x plus y is 800. Cool. Blah, 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 blah. What are the dimensions of the pen that can be constructed with the greatest possible area? Well, if I want to maximize area, this equation that I wrote down right now, not an area equation. So I can't take the derivative of that and let that help me. I need to take the derivative of the area equation. Okay, so the area of that fence would be length times width, which is x times y, but that's too many variables. So I need to get that area equation in terms of one variable. Well, fortunately for me, I know that y can be rewritten as 800 minus 2x based on the condition that I only have 800 feet of fencing. So my area is really x times 800 minus 2x. So my area is 800x minus 2x squared. And then if I want to maximize area, I'm going to take the derivative, a prime, set it equal to 0, and dNe. So 800 minus 4x equals 0. That would mean x had to be 200. So now I'm going to look at my table where I have x and a of x. Now let me think about my endpoints here. My area equation is x and 800 minus 2x, and those should be positive, so their minimum value should be 0, really. So the minimum value for x is 0, and the maximum value of x would be whatever makes this inside 0, which would be 400. And then the number I also need to test is 200. So when x equals 0, my area is 0. When x equals 400, my area is 0. But when x equals 200, my area is 200 
times 800 minus 2 times 200, which is 400. Well, 800 minus 400 is 400. 400 times 200 is 8 with four zeros after it. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 80,000. And this is in feet. So when x is 200 feet, then my area is eight, uh, 80,000 square feet. Okay. So, yeah. There we go. So, um, what else? Oh, it says, what are the dimensions? I knew there was something else I had to do. What are the dimensions of the pen? So if X is 200, then Y would be 400. So then my maximum dimensions would come from 200 by 200 by 400 feet of fencing. Okay, let's go on to the next page. All right, now, what if I built a rectangle that has its base on the x-axis and its upper two vertices on the parabola 12 minus x squared? Okay, so 12 minus x squared looks like this, and then these would have x-intercepts of plus or minus root 12. And I want to build a rectangle in there. So like I could build this rectangle or I could build this rectangle or that rectangle. I want to find the rectangle that has the biggest area though. So what I really need is I need an area formula for this rectangle. Well, if I take that rectangle, that rectangle has a width and a height. So base times height would be the area of the rectangle, width times height. Yeah, except that's too many variables. Okay, well, well, let's think about the width. How did I make these rectangles? Well, what we did when we made these rectangles is I really just said, okay, let's start at some random value on the x-axis. I don't know. Let's call it x. And then I go up and I hit this parabola. And then I make a rectangle out of that, so I travel to the other side and then back down. Well, since y equals 12 minus x squared is an even function, that means it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which means if I have an x over here, I technically have a negative x here, which makes this total width 2x. And then the height of the parabola is literally the equation of the parabola, 12 minus x squared. Make sense? So if I want to maximize the area, what I really want to maximize is 24x minus 2x cubed, which means I want to know when the derivative equals zero or doesn't exist. So that's going to be 24 minus 6x squared equals zero or doesn't exist. Well, it always exists. So let's see, 24 minus 6x squared, if x was plus or minus 2, then that would equal zero. So now let's think about our domain here. Well, let's see. Our domain is the x, since this needs to be built on the x-axis, my minimum and maximum values for x are radical 12 and radical 12, right? Except, you know what? If I let x equal negative radical 12, or honestly, like even negative three, let's say, this is going to be positive in here, but that's going to be negative and I'm going to get a negative area. So you know what? I don't want to test that x value. I want to test radical 12 definitely. But because this 2x is out in front, really my minimum value for x would be zero because I'm using the x on the right-hand side to draw this rectangle in the first place. All right, and then I also need to test positive and negative 2, but only the ones that are between these endpoints, so really just positive 2. So now let's evaluate a of x at radical 12. So that would be 2 times radical 12, 12 minus 12, that's 0. And if x is 0, I have 0 times, well, that's 0. And then if x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 
2 squared is also 4. So I have 4 times 8, which is 32. So it says, what is the largest area the rectangle can have? This is the largest area, is 32. And it also says, what are the dimensions? Okay, so the dimensions, x was 2. But if I come over here, if x is 2, this distance right here is 4. And this height right here, when x equals 2, was 8. So the dimensions are 4 by 8. Okay. And what I think I would like to do next is I would like you to try 4 and 5 without me. I'm going to pause the video and then come back and see if you got it right. So let's do that. Pause the video right now and then come back and see if you got the right answer. For your first one, what we have here is we are given an area dimension, but we have to optimize a perimeter dimension. So if our area is 216, that means x times y is 216. And what I did is I said, okay, I've got to divide this up into two different parts with an x. So my dimensions are x by y, but my perimeter is 3x plus 2y. So since we want to optimize the perimeter, that's the one I need to get in terms of just one variable. So I come back over here and I say, well, from this first equation, 216 equals xy, so y is 216 over x. I substituted that in here. I expanded the perimeter equation. I took the perimeter and set it equal to 0 or DNE. I got values of plus or minus 12. And then I said, okay, let me think about realistic dimensions. X could be zero, X could be 12, X really shouldn't be negative. But the thing is X can't actually be zero because Y is 216 divided by X. So the only answer that I really need to get here is the answer where when X is 12, Y ends up being 18. And so the fencing I need is 72 meters of fence because I need three 12s and two 18s. And then the dimensions are 12 by 18. And then when I come down here, what I really want to do with this one is graph it. And I'm doing this one live here. So I have pi squared minus x squared. And that's a parabola that looks like this. So this is pi squared. This is y equals pi squared minus x squared. And this would have a 0 at negative pi and to positive pi. And then I'm also supposed to graph y equals negative cosine x, and negative cosine x comes through like this. And it says find an equation representing the area of the rectangle and find the rectangle with the greatest area. So these are both even functions, but when I pick a value for x this time, my height is really to the top curve and to the bottom curve. So the area of this rectangle, when I pick a random value for x, this width is gonna be 2x, and the height right here is gonna be the top curve, which is pi squared minus x squared. And then what I'm gonna do is subtract the y value of the bottom curve, because I'm be subtracting a negative, and my bottom curve is a negative cosine x. So that height right there is pi squared minus x squared plus cosine x. So the area would be the width, which is 2x, times the height, which is pi squared minus x squared plus cosine x. So my area equation is that. And then if we want to find the rectangle with the greatest area, I want to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So that's going to be 2x pi squared minus 2x cubed plus 2x cosine x. So a prime is just going to be 2 pi squared minus 6x squared plus, now I have a product rule, the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Oh, gross. And so then what we want to do is we want to set this equal to 0 or DNE right in the calculator. Um, so I am going to do that 
except I got to flip this up or it's going to drive me crazy. So real quick. Oh, gross. So I have y equals 2 pi squared minus 6x squared minus 2x sine x plus 2 cosine x. Yeah, that's what I got. And I want to know when that equals 0, which is 1.648. And so then if I wanted to find the dimensions, my x would be 1.648, so the width is 2 times that. Which is 3.296. And the height is 2x times, well, uh, let's see, or the height, pardon me, is pi squared minus x squared plus cosine x. So pi squared minus x squared, oops, x squared minus x squared plus cosine x, 7.076. And those are the dimensions that would give me the greatest area. Ta-da! Um, and then it says find the coordinates, so we can go back and find the coordinates from there. But I'm not going to do that right now because it would take me forever. So I'm going to call it quits here and say I hope you guys are all having a great day. And we'll talk about this more again later. See ya.